Hello, this is Pat, and uh, this is the presentation on the future of programmable materials. Um, this is an outline for the studio for the future of art and culture. This is like um, the proposal for what I would like to explore more um, in this class. So as you can see here, we kind of see, you know, object being um, reorganized into um, different things. Um, so the idea that you know object can be uh, manipulated and can be reprogrammed to become auto objects um, is something that I have been in always interested in. But you know one thing that kind of start me to think about this is the play doh that we have at the conference on the future of art in California. So uh, this play doh kind of remind me of many auto interesting project. Like uh, this one is called Hypercell by the Architecture um, Association in England, uh, where they built a tiny robot that can, um, you know, come together and become uh, architecture. Um, this is more like um, an experimental prototype, um, but we certainly can see this in the future. Um, Auto project. Uh, in a similar manner, uh, this one is is at the. Uh, Harvard University, where a tiny robot um, reprogram itself um, to form different shape, you know, like in nature when you know different organization, different organism um, reorganize itself to you know form uh, a bigger movement and create um, something interesting. So this is the robot, um, and it's. Uh, decentralized in the sense that it doesn't have like a, a central brain, central brain that um, say which one should go to to where, but it's more like a, a self-organized, which is a behavior that we saw a lot um, in the biological system. Um, yes, so this one is also a very interesting project at the MIT Media Lab, where um, object can change its shape. Um, Especially, you know, the, at, at the media lab, there's a research group called Tangible Media where uh, they explore on how media um, can be tangibilized and uh, change shape to, to suit um, different scenarios. Yeah, so this is one of the projects that they did. Um, and then uh, in, the, in the same manner, um, from the same research group, um, they explore different techniques on fabricating objects that can, you know, change its shape. Uh, whether it's using air to control the uh, the behavior, or using um this one, the following one, using um biological um system like a uh, cell. This project used bacteria cell printed on the textile to uh, create movement, so the bacteria will grow when the moisture is present. So like when, when people sweat, it will activate the bacteria on the surface to to uh, grow bigger and that changed the um, the movement of the textile. As you can see here that um, they place these bacteria in the textile uh, nicely on the um, sport wear. So um, as, the, as, as this uh, person uh, move, the the textile kind of open up and allow the the sweat to um, moisturize. Yeah, so this is a very interesting project. Um, interesting collaboration between bio art and fashion design. So it's very interesting. Yep, and this one is my uh, project that um, my my team in Thailand are working on. We develop a. Uh, food printers um, that can fabricate um, you know different material uh, especially different edible materials and um, we can kind of customize it in the shape that we want so um, in the future many things can be fabricated and 3d printed and even beyond so I, I foresee that the future of materials um, are fabricated in the way that you know um, that can be um that that that's beyond um crafting it's more like um digitally manipulated 
and you know there's pro and con to that of course but I think it's, it's presenting some um, interesting opportunity also the future of materials um, can rely on the self-organization properties that you know um, object will be able to change the, cha change the set the shape of um, change the shape uh, because the, the molecules that made up of that, whether it's biological or physical, can, you know, orient um, it, or, you know, can orient itself to become different objects. And um, both of this uh, fabrication and, and self-organization can be done in the way that human can program this material. You know, we, we tend to think that programming is for software, for something digital, but now we are bridging the gap between, um, you know, object and programmable uh, properties. So um, a little more detail, as I mentioned, you know, things in the future can be fabricated, human organ, like right now we have cell 3D printer that can print uh, the organ for us to replace. Um, we have robot that can build the bridge. Um, you know, fabricate architectural building uh, and, you know, it can create interesting shapes that um, we may not inspire, we may not, you know, think of it before. Or we can print uh, the unconventional materials, like this one is a 3D printer that can print mud into um, uh, some sort of a, you know, uh, structure. So in the future, object can be fabricated in the fascinating way that you know we may never imagine and it's not just like um traditional material there's also unconventional material like mud that can be you know become something interesting and the uh, programmable property is also interesting as well because you know in the old day we tend to program using you know machine language we need to you know understand a lot of syntax a lot of like um something that looks like alien language but now we have a, a, an ability to create uh, a tangible um, tangible tool for programming like the Osmo coding which just push a bunch of objects and it translates into computer compute computer code or visual programming where you can just you know um, put different symbols together and it executes into you know action that computer or robot will do or natural language program programming where you know you can just say you know give me some random number instead of typing um, you know random you know, functions so or say you know I want to find something and then the, the computer will be able to recognize that and then execute it so um, the way that we communicate with the machine is gonna be um, more natural and more profound and this one is a very interesting uh, example um, by the Japanese uh, food company, uh, they create um, uh, the, their product is called Guliko, which is uh, you know like a, a sticky bread, very delicious. But now uh, they they wanna you know use this as a way to teach children how to code. So they make a, a, an app that once the once the kid uh, you know put different configuration like you know orient. Um, the, 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 the sticky braid in a different way, it will translate into computer programming in the way that we, you know, we type command on in computer. So you know, now food is becoming uh, the, the, the language for programming. So we can kind of see the, the, the bridge between um, tangible object and, and, and programmable, programmable property of, 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 of computer. So in the future, these three properties are programmable materials, self-organization property, and you know the ability to fabricate matters, um, different matters into different things. Is the way that you know we will, we will think about the world. You know now we kind of see that we can do a lot of things in, in digital or uh, in the digital world. But if we can bridge the gap between digital world and real world and be able to you know manipulate it. Um, it will give a lot of you know interesting output and many exciting stuff. Um, but you know our fan, our amazing, fancy, um, fantasy imaginator, Cindy, you know, encouraged me to to blow it up and you know think even further. So this is what I imagine beyond um, what I present. 
but you know what I'm gonna present after this is based on that three principle um, the fabrication self-organization and programmable property so in 2067 50 years from now I foresee that you know the way that we interact with this object is like we have you know ability to read brains activity to read what we want to read what we imagine and then we have smart play-doh um, a play-doh that can you know organize itself and transform itself into something interesting as we imagine for example if I imagine of a house then this smart play-doh will reorient itself into become a house if I imagine that you know I want a, I want a car then this object will reor reorient itself and become a car so with this pr premise um, the only thing that you need is the smart play-doh that you can kinda you know use and then use your brain wave to communicate with it but that gives me um, you know to think further you know based on this premise then I start to build story and, and start to think about you know how would human interact with that um, for example, you know, in, in, in the future of art, if I just imagine, um, you know, a, a, a famous um, sculpture, sculpture um, uh, David, um, in, I, I believe in Italy right now, um, and then I can just, you know, this Play-Doh is just transform itself into this uh, beautiful sculpture, then what's the meaning of, you know, going and see the real art? What if, you know, the future of art or, or is relying on this um, Play-Doh, smart Play-Doh object, you know, um, how can, like, why do we need to go and see Mona Lisa if our Play-Doh can um, perfectly transform into Mona Lisa painting in front of us, and then in another day we want to see Van Gogh painting, um, then it will transfer, transform itself into Starry Night painting by Van Gogh. So, what is the future of art if this material can transform itself so it's a good question to think about or what's the future of economy uh, if we can you know fabricate money um, then what is the thing that prevent us from having the real money what is the thing that we use to authentic authentify this material whether it's authentic or artificial what is the boundary between that or what's the future of crime if I can fabricate anything or you know use this play-doh and then I you know start to do something bad about it um, what is the limitation of the future of programmable materials um, that's a, you know good question to think about and you know with these three exciting properties that we're gonna see more coming in the future I'm, I'm kinda interested in the human dimension or the societal dimension of this so um, so you know I think it's definitely gonna take us to a strange new world that that we might imagine but we need to imagine further so um, I would like to end by saying you know that uh, you know this is one of my favorite quotes from Bill Gates we always underest we always overestimate the change that we occur in the next two years but we always underestimate the change that we occur in next ten. So don't let yourself be low into inaction. So I think it's you know we need to think about something and then execute on it and prototype it. As I you know uh, mentioned in the conference that my spatial power is to uh, prototype the impossible. So this is the outline of what I would like to do in my um, you know final presentation for the class. So I hope that, um, you know, you enjoy it. Thank you.